Hello everyone, Sheldon with iHardware here, back with another video. Uh, and this is an unexpected video actually, but uh, seeing that I got uh, some of the parts in or whatever that I weren't expecting to get until uh, later on, uh, I thought I'd make this video tonight. Uh, actually, currently right now it is New Year's Eve. Uh, I am actually working tomorrow, uh, so I thought I'd be able to get a video up and then I'll be able to upload it while I'm at work tomorrow. So, uh, what is this video going to be about? Well... Um, like I mentioned in my previous video, uh, I, was, I was expecting to receive a motherboard and a graphics card. Um, I will get to the graphics card in a bit. Uh, but the motherboard that I actually was expecting to receive and did receive is this Gigabyte uh, GA-G41MT-S2PT um, LGA-775 uh, motherboard. So... Um, I actually picked up this motherboard because um, I wanted to have a new uh, Socket 775 uh, motherboard for all the processors that I have. I have way too many Socket 775 processors that I want to be able to put to use uh, in this particular system, uh, which I'll get into in a few minutes. Uh, I actually have a Pentium E5200. That was not what this, that's not the CPU I was expecting to use in here. Uh, I was planning on using a Pentium E2160, which is actually a 1.8 gigahertz stock CPU. Uh, and the nice part about this board is that I can actually overclock uh, a little bit using the front side bus or the clock multiplier. I'll show you guys that in BIOS too. Uh, currently, right now, it is actually just installing Windows Update, so I'm waiting for all of that to stop. Uh, hopefully, it'll stop once I get into it in a few minutes. So. Um, currently, right now, uh, like I said, I have the Pentium E2, or <clears throat> not the E2160. That's the CPU I plan on using. For some reason, it didn't want to post as a system. It might be dead. I don't know. It came out of a trash pick computer. Um, I might try messing with it more tomorrow. Uh, actually, tomorrow I'm expecting to get some systems uh, from the recycling at work. Um, I think I'm getting my hopes up way too much on that. Hopefully, they're decent systems. Um, I'm expecting some 775 systems, so maybe we'll see what processors they have, what systems they are in general. Um, don't really want to get into it that much because if it doesn't happen, it's going to be kind of bumming, and uh, that's a lot to explain, I guess, uh, in this video. So, anyways, before I get off topic, uh, I put uh, all this stuff in a case. Uh, the first case I actually put it in was my um, Exxon case, or I can't remember how this case is. $25, like cheapest micro ATX case you can get on Amazon. Uh, surprising uh, case for the price uh, actually pretty decent uh, for what you get uh, the only problem was is it was very cramped the motherboard fit in the perfect everything fit in there perfectly but swapping parts in and out like trying to get this stupid heat sink in and all that was just an absolute pain so took it all out made a test bench overclocked the CPU on that and then I moved everything into this case which feature had the Pentium D system that I just did a video on which I'm going to I'm having editing problems with, so that will be up after this video, most likely. Um, so, uh, if that seems chronologically out of order, just ignore that. But anyways, that's the system that was in this case. Um, I put that in the beige system, but it was originally in this system uh, when I pulled it out of the recycling at work. So, currently it has the uh, GTX uh, 650 Ti in here. This is my um, 650 Ti, just a regular one, but it has the boost cooler on it. As you can see, there's a little cutout here for where the... Uh, SLI fingers would be because the boost features SLI sync the uh, fingers uh, nice looking core personally my favorite looking graphics card is that graphics card that I own next to uh, my new one and the GTX 260 <clears throat> but I love the blockiness of this one it just looks solid and uh, doesn't sag at all because it's a very light uh, graphics card actually so uh, perfect card to pair with this system uh, like I said I have that gigabyte board in there right the Pentium is in there and then I have a four gigabyte stick of DDR3 that is the nice thing about this board it does support DDR3 and to a lot of people that actually might be a downside of this board since um, most of the reviews on this thing if you go on Newegg or Amazon or anything um, they will say that the motherboard is dead on arrival it didn't post da, 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 RAM problems that's the thing is is that this RAM is very or this motherboard is very very picky about what RAM it supports um, this is I put a uh, DDR3 um, 1333 uh, megahertz uh, kit or stick in there. So um, I've heard that some uh, 1600 megahertz sticks work. It does down clock it. Like this stick, it got down clocked to 60, 667 megahertz. Um, sometimes uh, it's just weird because the chipset LGA775, um, I don't believe, officially supported uh, DDR3 RAM. So Gigabyte way to work around with that. Uh, 
I actually did a pretty decent job in the fact that mo a lot of DDR3 sticks work with it um, is actually pretty shocking to be honest. So uh, it also definitely helps improving with overclocking and stuff like that. The only downside right now is that I only have one stick in there so it's not in dual channel. So I'm going to pick up an 8GB kit, get that thrown in here. The CPU, which I'll get into in a second, what the voltage and all that stuff, uh, clock speed is on it. So, um, like I said, basically it's an IPIC board. Uh, just make sure you do your research on what RAM is supported with it. There's a lot of people on Newegg reviews. Uh, I think it was one of the first reviews actually stated RAM kits that do support work on this board. So, check that out if you're ever looking at picking up this board. I highly recommend it because it is a brand new LGA775 board. Uh, it's supported under Windows 7. Um, I haven't tried running 10 on it. Uh, right now, currently, I just put Vista on it. I was running 7 on before, but I wanted to have a period correct OS. Uh, maybe do some more messing around with Vista. Also, I have my Windows Vista Ultimate key laying around, so that's why I threw it on there. Uh, it's still doing a bunch of these updates right now, so I'm just going to let all that go. Uh, I'll just split this video over into the other section. But um, what I can show you guys, actually, is the... Sorry if there's a lot of camera shaking... Uh, I do have a uh, CPU uh, Z and hardware monitor up. So um, also maybe run some Prime 95. I don't have that installed right now. I had it installed on 7. Uh, I have um, confirmed that this is a stable overclock, not a 100% stable. I haven't confirmed that yet. Uh, I only ran uh, Prime 95 for about 10 minutes. Uh, it passed, I believe, four of the large tests. So pretty confident with that um if i want to push a little bit more i might do that but uh, another thing i want to do is maybe get some heat sinks to put on the vrms before i push it any higher i don't think the uh core voltage is going to be enough to um cause problems with the vrms but just to be sure and seeing the airflow in this case is not uh totally the greatest so there is the voltage and stuff right there 1.216 volts on the cpu uh core uh that was bumped up from a Point two is the stock voltage on this thing so higher voltage but i was able to get it overclock to three uh, gigahertz um the only thing is with this overclock is as you can see it says 2.5 gigahertz that's the stock so um i can't remember what percentage overclock that is but that's half a gigahertz overclock so uh pretty decent overclock for uh, what it is the pentium e2160s are those stock 1.8 gigahertz like i was saying uh people have reportedly overclocked those things up to three gigahertz um what was that? on the stock coolers and on these G41 chipset boards and even uh, G31 chipset boards. So nothing special wise, but for like what you can get when you, uh, how cheap you can get uh, a G31 board or find if you have those laying around, it's a pretty cheap overclock. And the performance gain actually from 1.8 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz. I even saw people possibly getting, I think it was up to like 4 gigahertz on the dang things. Um, it's incredible performance boost and it's definitely a noticeable jump. It's Unlike a lot of modern overclocks where it's jumping maybe anywhere from uh, 4 gigahertz to maybe 4.5 or something like that. Uh, so those are some notable, noticeable overclocks and this was before uh, Intel started really locking down their CPUs and stuff like that. So basically, 7.5 um, CPU most of the times are unlocked unless they're OEM chips. So anyways, like I said, uh, 3 gigahertz. Um, what I can show you guys though is the thing is I had to overclock this through the front side bus. Um, I believe this was an OEM chip, so I had to overclock it that way. Um, I activate Windows, totally forgot about that. But uh, it shows right here 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, if you had overclocked it using the core, um, uh, just core overclocking, base, the uh, CPU ratio overclock, uh, it would show the actual clock speed here. Uh, but since it was through the front side bus, only uh, certain programs will pick it up as being the actual 3 gigahertz overclock like it is. As you can see there, it got up to 3 gigahertz. Um, or 3000 megahertz if you want to round it that way. Um, so uh, I could show you guys the RAM and stuff like that. It's a weird special memory brand. I'm in a really weird angle right here. I cause a lot of camera shaking, which I don't want to do. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if I can get, uh, I might show it. I might uh, do a validate thing. I already did that though, so I don't want to do it again and overwrite the old one. Uh, but yeah, there's the chipset G41, like I said, uh, in gigabyte board. Good luck with this board. Like I said, great board. Brand new LGA775 board, which is kind of hard to come by. The fact that they're still making them is absolutely awesome. Uh, this is the revision 2.0 model too. So uh, DDR3, yeah, four gigabytes. 
Uh, I'm going to try and get a naked white kit, like I was saying. Uh, actually, here it is. V Color Technology is the manufacturer. I haven't heard of them, but so far I've had good luck with this. I haven't tried overclocking this RAM, actually, so I might try that. Uh, GTX 650 Ti. Um, I haven't installed the uh, most up to date driver. It's actually using like the video um, driver uh, reference one because uh, on these Windows updates, which is not allowing me to run GeForce Experience and update those drivers. Uh, so under full load, the Pentium, it looks like gets up to around 51 degrees. That was under Prime 95 too. Uh, this core stays around 45. It gets at the highest it looked like. Um, so it might be some with the thermal compound, but I've noticed on a lot of 775 chips, the core is always seem to be cooler than a few of the other ones. So it usually depends on the way the thermal compound is connect contacting with the uh, CPU cooler. But uh, great, these temperatures, uh, these CPUs run cool as heck, and that's why people were saying you can overclock them on the uh, stock coolers because um, the highest TDP uh, support safely is 71 degrees Celsius. So uh, if you keep it at least 65, I'd say you're probably good with a stable overclock. And at a stock cooler, that's probably the temperatures you'd be looking at right now. So uh, motherboards, temperature sensors are all been whack. So I think this is the only one that's working and that might actually be the C one of the CPU socket uh, temperatures. So uh, everything else looks fine. One point uh, CPU V core, I think that's what the actual V core is, is 1.232 volts. So I did up the voltage quite a bit to be able to get to that uh, clock. I might see it farther, maybe try 3.2 gigahertz, um, but I'm pretty happy with this overclock. I can't remember exactly what um, score it got in a uh, what was it performance mark eight uh but i will say it was slightly faster uh actually it's um according to uh performance mark uh or or neck and neck more or less with the uh core 2 duo e 8400 which is the same clock speed three gigahertz at stock uh core 2 chip so not bad at all for a uh neck or a bottle down or a um what do you call that uh cut down core 2 duo time so Love these little Pentium chips. They overclock like a little champ. Um, I'm going to try doing some more work with this system. In fact, I'm actually thinking about picking up another one of these boards, seeing how many of those CPUs I have. Uh, and I have that spare case left over, so I can throw all that stuff in there. Uh, I might have some extra parts. And if I get that RAM, I'll have extra RAM, too, to throw in there. So uh, that might be fun to do. That fan right there is just hot glued in the front, actually. Uh, there's not a design fan mount there. So um, it's just there to keep the GPU cool and the uh, CPU uh uh, cool and all that stuff because uh, this case to be honest isn't designed to be running uh, probably this high end of hardware or hot running of hardware so airflow is decent it just comes in uh, have the power supply which is 500 watt EVGA B power supply uh, and then this 90 miller Antec uh, exhaust which has its individual um, fan control right there so other than that a lot of systems that I had my Xeon build uh, I don't know if I did a video on that I actually don't think I did but I have the uh, Western Digital 320 gigabyte drive there, uh, just an IDE optical drive. Um, pretty much just a simplistic build. Uh, really love it. Actually, love this case. It's just another one of these in in win V500 cases, cases which are built like tanks. Um, absolutely love in wins cases. Actually, probably one of my favorite case manufacturers right now. So, um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm trying to think what I was gonna do. Uh, I might actually do a quick uh, update video too on my uh, graphics card once I once I get the drivers and everything installed because I actually just did a clean install of Windows. I was having some problems with Catalyst mixing. Uh, I uninstalled my NVIDIA drivers and stuff like that, but I think there's still some conflicts with some other software and stuff thinking that I still have the NVIDIA card and what's so not. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I'll do some updates or I might update the uh, description if I end up pushing the CPU more to get you guys a uh, confirmed total of what I actually got the CPU up to. Uh, speed wise and if I end up getting another board and stuff like that so let me know guys if you guys want to see a uh, video of me actually doing the actual overclocking and stuff like that um, I was thinking about doing that but it was so late at night when I was overclocking this thing that I just didn't feel like making a video at all uh, plus everyone was sleeping so, uh, before I ramble on more uh, just if you want to feel free to look at all this stuff positive uh, screen video or whatever um, feel free to look at all these temperatures and specs and stuff like that uh, I'll try and get a validation mark thing and put it in the uh, description too if you guys want to look at that. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video, which uh, should be uploaded probably sometime uh, tonight or um, 
Actually, what is it? It's New Year's Eve. So uh, this video will probably actually be up in 2016, uh, January 1st. Uh, so probably the day after that. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get it edited and stuff like that. I just got to get my main system up and running. So that's it, guys. Very much for watching. Just past the 15-minute mark. And I hope you guys have a happy new year.